Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com, coming to you on Thursday, March 26th. Again, not in COG Studios. The norm now is at the home studios. We have a good show for you today. We're going to give you a quick update on the league, any press releases that have come out. Also, uh, some players now are testing positive, not an MLS, but we're going to talk about where they are testing positive and how that goes. We also have a little wrap-up of the first half of our bracket that we're going to talk about. Um, and then, of course, we're going to get you ready for some of the things that you could be watching on the Internet coming up. Um, so lots of stuff to sort of uh, key you in, clue you in on this stuff, and to help me do it. Uh, he's back once again. It's Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. Hammer, how's it going, buddy? It's, it's going well. You know, yeah. Again, strange times, still in quarantine, still holding up, family still getting along, kids still getting along, wife still married to me. So I call it a success. Yeah, I, I was going to say, uh, if everybody didn't see... And I think some people were caught unawares, uh, Eric, that the LA Galaxy actually did play a game last oh, week. Yes. Uh, yeah, LA Galaxy versus Orlando City, a 2-1 victory for the LA Galaxy. If you have no idea what we're talking about, uh, you really should head over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where we can give you the full account of that game. Uh, Eric and I were there. We were sitting in the press box. The rain was coming down. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, it the was, weather was inclement there. It, it was. It was. It, like we, <laughs> As we said, it never rains in Southern California, except it does. Um, so uh, you can check that out, cornerofthegalaxy.com. And a little birdie has told me, Eric, that uh, the LA Galaxy will take on Sporting Kansas City at Dignity Health Sports Park, wink, wink, uh, at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday. Um, that is when that game was originally scheduled to kick off. And so our game will kick off at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, probably around 7.37, if we're being real, real honest about it. <laughs> Well, if you, uh, if you timed your halves just right, I think I think you can get it to line up with the schedule appropriately. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, just something that made me laugh. I think and we talked about this uh, via text. Is the, one of the comments on the YouTube feed was, you know, I liked Eric's uh, hushed golf tones, and uh, little do they know, it's just that that wasn't a, a comedic choice. You know, I, I've got kids sleeping, I've got dogs to worry about. You know, I'm hiding in my my son's room right now while the the, the kids sleep in another room. So, uh, the hushed golf tones are not not a comedic choice. This is by necessity. Yeah, necessity. So you stay married. Um, yep. so that way you, you're not murdered. Um, yep. you know, all of these things that way you still have a place to sleep tonight. That's always, always That's good. The goal. I, I am facing the opposite wall of Jake where Jake is sleeping. Uh, and I'm hoping to God, it doesn't go through the three doors and the <laughs> towels I put down underneath the door because my wife will kill me. Uh, if I wake up the baby, so we'll, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed say, and see hoping, how that goes. Yeah. We're hoping we don't get a condensed show only five <laughs> minutes and then, you know, cut in short. I locked you know the what? door, so I'm yep. safe. I'm telling you right now, if my <laughs> wife barges in here to yell at me, I'm leaving it on the podcast, all right? You you need to know you why know it all went down. Okay? That is just good pod. <laughs> that is. That's how it goes. Uh, let's get you updated on the league real quick. Not a bunch to tell you about, except the league apparently still targeting May 10th, uh, which is an unrealistic target. We keep telling you that, but that is where they say that they are targeting uh, May 10th. But they did come out with another training moratorium extension, which we're expecting basically every Wednesday or Thursday um, as we continue along this. Uh, but now it takes the training moratorium up to and including April 3rd. Um, so again, just extending by seven days, every Sunday, seven Seven days they're extending that training moratorium i don't expect them to take a, a bigger chunk out of this and say hey you know what we're just going to extend it for 14 days but i wouldn't put it by them um by any means so uh basically up to and including april 3rd which is about a week from now it's thursday um april 3rd is next friday um so just so we understand now one of the th well, the only change that we have in this training moratorium extension is that mls is now allowing some players to relocate out of their home areas remember we told everybody uh that basically players had to stay inside their own home based areas so basically southern california for guys who are on the la galaxy um, but they couldn't go home mls is now allowing some players to relocate out of their home areas back to where they live because some of these guys don't live uh in their home areas uh by car on a case-by-case -case basis but they're doing it in a very limited amount and you have to go and it, like basically appeal to mls and say hey my entire family lives in idaho right now and i want to go back to idaho and i'm in southern california so let me drive my car to idaho um, Who on the galaxy lives in Idaho? Do you have insider information? No, I don't think anybody lives in Idaho. Does Gordon, I was just trying to Gordon Wild have his, his family circus out there? 
he very well could. I mean, that's a that's a that's a likely outcome. Um, but no, it, for right now, it seems that uh, that most I, I think most of the guys in L.A. I mean, you could look like guys maybe like People Gonzalez, um, you know, where he might have family outside the country or like we talked about, you know, Jonathan yeah. Dos Santos or Chicharito, well, where they have family where maybe they'd want to move um, to for something like this. Um, and they're not they're not allowed to. Basically, this is where my uh, social media you know, sleuthing comes in handy. So people Gonzalez, uh, you know, his family is with him, or at least his immediate family is his wife with him, who is pregnant and expecting a child soon. So he has a son with him and his wife with him. So I, I would imagine that his wife's not going to be traveling out of the country anytime soon. Uh, probably expecting to have a, a child pretty soon here. So I'm sure he's staying put locally, but you know, players like, uh, Pavone, Christian Pavone with family back in Argentina, um, you know, Dos Santos, I know he has family in, in Mexico. So those would be the, the players that would, I think would be most likely to move uh is there any truth to the rumor that he will be giving birth uh, he told his wife to give wor- birth in pipo rivera oh i heard that that's in the running for the for the name middle oh, name people yeah, yeah people rivera people <laughs> rivera i, I like gonzalez, it. People rivera yeah. gonzalez i like it it, it, it just it rolls has a ring. The yeah it does have a ring to it um all right so anyway so that is the the update on the training moratorium extension again you know this is going to be our flag that sort of waves in the air whenever things might be starting to spool back up um i don't think we're anywhere near that yet and i don't think mls thinks they're anywhere near that yet but they're going to keep extending this training moratorium by seven days and seven days and seven days as we continue on this so probably every thursday i'm going to get to tell you about how they've extended the training moratorium and i'll tell you if there's anything else that they uh, added to that if you want to keep track of all of the press releases mls or the la galaxy have sent out uh regarding the uh the covid19 suspension of of the season so far, postponement postponement of the season so far. Uh, you can go to cornerofthegalaxy.com and we have our uh, coronavirus tracker there. Um, not my favorite tracker I've ever done. Uh, that's I was sure. going to say, you know, we, I, I like to give you a hard time about the tracker and, and the off season and all the rumors. You know, never in my wildest dreams would I imagine that a Corner of the Galaxy would have a pandemic tracker uh, on their website. It's pretty, these are, are strange times indeed. Yeah, well, I mean, it's one of the it's it's this whole thing. It's like, oh, well, you know, whenever we started the season, did we think anything like this was coming down the line? And we didn't. Well, and that's um, yeah. Another crazy thing about that is with the the players union, you know, we, we thought, you know, there might be a work stoppage. And if you know, don't buy tickets to those away games early, because, you know, if there's the season and doesn't start on time, that those games might be added later. Uh, and then the season gets up and running, really no problems with the you know, the, the players union and the season goes off and running and then it gets hit again. So there ended up being a stoppage to the season, but not for the reason that we thought. So that's kind of the irony of it all. Yeah, it is. I will say this a little heads up for anybody who's thinking about, uh, possibly going to an away game later this year. If you are confident that you think this league is going to get played this year, which, um, I feel still feel fairly confident we're going to get some soccer this year. I don't know how much, um, but I did see people uh, buying tickets for games, you know, in September, uh, which is far enough away, which is a good guess, you know, that type of thing. And if you buy tickets right now, they're deeply discounted. I think I saw a round trip from LAX to Nashville for like $91 total. Yeah, I think, um, I, yeah, that's that's a good deal. And, and the one piece of advice I'd give you as well, if you're looking, you know, to do away travel and September seems like that's probably a safe bet. And Nashville technically is in the Western Conference. So if they do end up with a shortened season, they're probably going to play in conference more than out of conference. So, uh, you know, maybe something like Philadelphia, Toronto, maybe don't book those uh, games or I think they play Toronto at home. They don't go away to Toronto this year or do they? I, I don't. Someone correct. We'll look into that. It, you know. yeah, we'll have the fact checker look into that. But uh, but you know, try to stay with your in conference opponents. I think you're better off with a Western Conference away travel than you would be with the Eastern Conference away travel this season. Uh, my other tip on that is uh, make sure you buy the insurance. Um, yes, <laughs> because <laughs> and for ni- you know for ninety bucks, it's going to be what an extra you know twenty bucks on top of that. So what's yeah. that really? Yeah, it should it should be it should be just consider it part of it and make sure that you know canceling it because of pandemic is covered. All right. Or canceling for any reason is basically covered on this. There's a team of lawyers that is being very careful with the language now, you know, because of something like this. Yeah. Oh, oh, I would imagine so. Um, The other thing that I thought was funny, uh, because I remember talking about this, Eric, and it was one of those things. uh, It was the home opener. Um, and I remember talking about it at halftime. People were like, oh man, I love getting these magnetic schedules. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I go, just wait until they like change a game or something. 
right? I go, because yeah. then they're useless. I go, that's the only bad thing about magnetic schedules is that like, once they change anything, and they're like, well, do they change games? I'm like, every year, one gets moved somewhere. Yeah, there's I go, always so, at least a midweek in Colorado, that, and it's always a midweek against Colorado that ends up getting shifted. Hey, uh, a midweek in Colorado <laughs> was the reason that the LA Galaxy turned it around, I think, in 2014. Um, so I think that was the, we're losing three to one. And Bruce Arena said, uh, went into halftime and said, uh, uh, talk to Kelly Tennant. I remember this specifically comes out of halftime. He sees Kelly Tennant, Kelly Tennant asks him what they need to do better. And he goes, I think you need to watch these guys. If we're going to do anything this season, they're going to have to show up right now. And I don't know what he said in, in the locker room, although the guys said that he was all over them and that he fired them up, but they came out and they ended up winning. I think that game four to three. Um, so, you know, that's, you sort of take that and say, okay, um, you know, that, that midweek against Colorado, it it actually worked and it actually meant something, but you're right. It it is always a midweek in Colorado (laughs) or it's like some crazy game in Dallas that gets rescheduled. That's also true. So, but yeah, magnetic schedules, great idea. LA galaxy PR, get the magnetic schedules out, but, uh, officially the world's worst, uh, souvenir game giveaway. (laughs) <laughs> is it? Haven't there been worse ones? I mean, are we going to go back to the flip flops, the flip flop debacle of the season ticket flip flop debacle? <laughs> oh, that's a whole of, different thing. Of of what? Yeah. 2016? Was that 2017? I think, so. I think it was supposed to be received in 2017. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good times. Uh, yeah, flip-flops. that was fun. Good to flip flops. <laughs> but this is literally an obsolete item. There Although, we go. I mean, I, maybe you could sell it on eBay in 20 years. <laughs> I'm sure. You, I, you know, I think I still have a couple pairs, actually. Uh, you know, they don't fit because they're different. They were like one size fits all. But, you know, hey, that, that's how it was. Anyway, <laughs> I thought you were going to say right foot was different than left foot. That would have been a disaster. That would it would also be. But yeah, magnetic schedules are right up there with uh, useless giveaways that everybody loves, though. Um, everybody's always happy to get their magnetic schedule. They're just they just don't know why. They just don't understand. It's definitely going to change. Um, so that's maybe they'll give out us new magnetic schedules whenever we come back for all this, right? Because <laughs> that have like all the dates and you know how I know we're having a tough time for content. We I think we've spent about six minutes, minutes on magnetic on. schedules. There, there Moving was on. So- <laughs> I, I can't remember. There was there was somebody in the EPL who and they were talking about how you know there, there's a big push in European football to finish everything by June thirtieth. Uh, there's all sorts of mem- yeah. remember how everybody yeah. always tells you that promotion and relegation solves all problems. Well, in this particular case, it's causing huge, massive yeah. issues. Some major um, fights now. Yeah, some major fights, and basically, uh, I, I can't remember who, which manager it was, but he said, you know what, we just ha- need to play every game for a month, every day for a month, if we need to, to finish out the season, right? And it was like, wow, can you imagine <laughs> playing football, playing soccer every single day for a month? Like, there or was a, a game header? every single... Yeah, <laughs> yeah to play Sunday two. league special. There you go. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, all right? See you at Dignity Hill Sports Park for the <laughs> 9 a.m. kickoff and then the 7 p.m. kickoff. Um, yeah, let's do it. I'm all about it. I'm, let's, let's rock and roll. We'll see how this goes. Um, let, let's get to a little bit more news, and then we can talk about some of the more fun things that are going on. Uh, so far, and up to at least the recording of this, and I'm expecting this to change um, because it's just the odds are against it, uh, is uh, it's March 26th, all right? It's about 10, 15 p.m. as we're recording this. I want to get this exactly right, but no MLS players currently have announced um, that they have tested positive uh, for coronavirus. Uh, but the first USL player has tested positive, and it came from Sacramento Republic up in Northern California. Uh, that was announced today. Basically, it said uh, Republic FC has learned that a member of the club's roster has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, the individual was exhibiting symptoms consistent with the virus and was immediately isolated at home and tested following proper protocols and upon the direction of team physicians and infectious disease experts from UC Davis Health. Uh, Health. Uh, the player remains in isolation at home and is recovering in good spirits while being monitored by club medical staff. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in here basically saying that, uh, you know, the club had already mandated that everybody, you know, not train together and that they close the train. Basically everything that MLS is doing uh, as well. So, um, you know, it's only a matter of time, really. And I would find it hard to believe that there isn't one already, but uh, there will be. And my guess is that you will see that there will be some MLS players who get confirmed um, with this as well. So, um, yeah, it's, a, that, it's a numbers game at this point, because just with the amount of players that are in the league, uh, you know, at, at some point, you know, it's going to affect someone uh, in the league. And so it is curious with the timeline, because, you know, we did see the the training moratorium extended. And if you do the math on when the league announced that they were going to 
stop their training. You know, it's about 14 days from when the, it's, it's been extended and that was the recommended quarantine, but then the CDC has come out and recommended, you know, eight weeks now. So now is it from the time they're tested is, you know, how are they able to do this? So I just think it's, it's going to have a huge domino effect because if there is an MLS player that tests positive, um, you know, what is going to be the protocol moving forward after that? And what's the timeline? Do you remove the player, you know, are the teammates involved? That's, I, I just can imagine this being a huge headache. So finishing a full season just seems completely out of the question at this point. Yeah, it does. And, and, you know, like you say, it's it's how long are you going to keep everybody away? I mean, the reason they're keeping all the training facilities closed right now is they're trying not to let uh, people come in contact with each other um, in a place and in an area. And I remember whenever Kevin and I were talking about the league re- restricting uh, locker room access for reporters, uh, we were uh, Kevin and I were both like, we understand completely because it's hot and it's sweaty and we're really close to everybody in there and we probably don't need to be. Um and so, you know, in, in the instance of this, that there's a, a, an infectious disease that can be given, you know, around to everybody. And so that certainly made sense that they restricted it. Our only concern whenever that whole thing was going on was whether or not we'd ever get that locker room access back. Um, so we'll see how that all plays out. But it was the smart move. And then really, we never even got to advance past that because, uh, you know, the, the games never got played. And Eric, it's only been two weeks, even though That's it feels <laughs> like it's been like two or three months. That is so true. Uh, yeah. It's been two weeks. The preseason feels like it was it was last last year. I mean, it feels like the games were that that long ago. With you know, I think it, part of that is, you know, a lot of people working at home and being stuck at home, or, or you know, if they are an essential employee working in the you know medical field, or the grocery industry, it's long days. So you know, it's not your average you know nine to five or ten hour shift or whatever it is. So the days definitely feel like weeks at this point. So it, it is crazy how slowly the time is going by, or how quickly. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, well, quickly or, or slowly, slowly yeah. or <laughs> go ahead. I'm everything. not wrong. Yeah, but yeah. still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, it, it's you know, it's amazing how long these last two weeks have felt like two years. Um, it's certainly it's certainly been a crazy time. Uh, somebody, one of our listeners, was saying uh, that she was remembering a game. Remember whenever we were, there was a preseason game, Eric, and there was rain and there was hail and all that fun stuff. And that wasn't that long ago either. <laughs> and that was our that was our our our, yeah, was our, our show. show. Yeah, it was our live show uh, where you and I were standing on a stage while there was basically microbursts and hail going all around. It was a good time. That was incredible. That would definitely be, uh, you know, top five corner of the galaxy moment for me is getting hailed on on the one day we were going to be at the stadium. <laughs> it was. Uh, I mean, it, it's comical. You have to laugh about it. We, we were we were laughing while we were also crying. Otherwise, you cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, let's get to some fun stuff now. Uh, MLS was is showing some classic games. Uh, one of the games that they showed today, um, and I think it kicked off around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. I can't remember exactly which on the West Coast. I think it was 5 p.m. Um, on the West Coast is that they showed the 2011 championship game between the LA Galaxy and the Houston Dynamo. Uh, a fun game, uh, a game that certainly has a lot of memories. I remember being there for that one. I remember it raining the entire time up to, until that game. Um, I remember, uh, you know, a bunch of little intricacies about this, but this was really the end of the journey whenever you considered 2009 and a trip to the MLS Cup final, even if it was surprising and a loss to Real Salt Lake on penalty kicks. Um, it was a end of a journey after 2010 and the Supporter Shield and the 2010 team was as good, if not better than the 2011 team that ended up winning the MLS Cup. But 2010 got knocked out in the playoffs by Dallas. Um, and then 2011 is sort of the culmination of that. And the 2011 team ends up being one of the most dominant, uh, f- you know, beginning to start teams that MLS has p- basically ever seen. Um, and then goes all the way through the playoffs um, and is ends up being crowned champion. A one nothing victory, a, a, a David Beckham to Robbie Keane to Landon Donovan, the three designated players combining yeah. to get uh, the goal there in the second half, I think 72nd minute of the, se- of the, of the second half. Uh, it was fun to rewatch it was fun to rewatch i'll tell you this you and i are going to talk about the bracket and we're going to talk about these teams and how good some of these la galaxy teams are and people are always going to argue that that fans have recency bias um and i will tell you if you watch even that 2011 game eric it wasn't that long ago that game is way slower than Mm -hmm. the game that is played right now on the field yeah, it wasn't exactly a barn burner in some of the goal fests that you've seen in Major League Soccer in recent years. So that's something that sticks out. You know, I remember it being an entertaining game, just kind of a funny anecdote. And I don't know if this is a uh, TMI for uh, our listeners out there, but hey, we're at home, we're in quarantine. Let's let's share a little bit of our souls here. Uh, 
I, I, this game is when my wife and I were actually in New York, you know, post being married recently after that year. So we said, you know, it was one of those, you're young, you don't have kids. Let's take a trip to New York city. So it happened to be in in the winter time, you know, MLS cup had been going on LA galaxy, you know, make it to MLS cup. They win that evening, you know, and if you, if you do some, some math, you know, my, my daughter was born in August, uh, 2012. So I'm just, I'm just saying if if you're doing the math, if you're doing the math, young couple on vacation celebrating, uh, yeah, so f- fond memories of uh, of that MLS Cup. That's that's why her name is Beckham. It's crazy. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't put it together, but it makes a lot of I'm, sense. I'm just now. saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, the the stories you eventually get to tell your children about how they were conceived is. This a good is. One. I'm gonna yeah, have to remember this that is, one. This is recorded now. So yeah. So I'm I'm on record. You're on record. You can't go back and change it. No, honey. <laughs> I was just I was just vamping for the podcast. Don't worry. Um, but no, I mean watching the. Tw- it was yeah, it was a bit. I promise. Um, MLS, you know, showing this game, the 2011 championship game. Obviously, it's a memory, at least in my mind, of of you know covering the LA Galaxy, doing this podcast. Um, you know, doing this was the first ever. By the way, 2011 is the first ever um, like uh, dramatic intro that we ever did. Like because uh, the our, our big thing is that for MLS cups we do big dramatic in- intros. So by you know 2011 it was probably two or three minutes long, and in 2012 it was probably like five minutes long, and then whenever we got to 2014 it was like seven and a half or nine minutes long, right? So we <laughs> we got better and better at them as the, as they sort of went along. And if you want to listen to one, uh, I'll try to find the dramatic intro from 2014 and and figure out a place to post that for everybody to hear again because it's still good yeah um i, I still I believe I, that yeah that predates me yeah when i started getting into it so I'm, i i'd be excited to to listen to those and so if you can go uh you know for mls cup i think i i'll, I'll go two or three minutes just for a midweek game at, at vancouver so i right. i can't imagine if we were to get into mls cup now well i i think uh, i think the nine minutes ones included like audio um, from games, I think it included like sideline stuff. I th- in fact, you remember I talked to you about the Bruce Arena talking to Kelly Tennant yes. in 2014. Yeah, that that clip is in there. I know it is because I, I remember pulling it. I had to go to Spectrum and ask him to ask him for it, um, and so they gave that to me. But um, but yeah, so all that stuff. But it, it but it did bring back. You know, wh- what are some of your favorite LA Galaxy games? I mean, whether it is for um, for what happened in the game, or maybe it was just the atmosphere that that sort of kicks around. I mean, for you, I'm sure you have a couple. What which which have, one stood out for you? It's funny. I have uh, like three that stick out uh, just from a, a pure elation standpoint. And it's not really an exciting answer anymore just because of the past couple of years we've been beating the drum on this one. It's the, the Zlatan debut. Uh, the first El Trafico, you know, the stadium being electric, being down 3-0, the comeback, the fact that Zlatan arrived on a plane earlier, scored a, a wonder goal. That that's that's up there as my number one favorite sporting event that I've ever attended, uh, in the pure elation standpoint. So that's like number one with a bullet. But at this point, I think that's not really a fun answer. Uh, so my second one uh, would be the 2012 MLS Cup. So yep. I mentioned um, earlier that I wasn't in town for the 2011 uh, MLS Cup, so I was unable to make it to the game. So in 2012, when all the cards lined up perfectly uh that they were able to host mls cup again i said there's no way i'm missing this so i was able to go with my dad and being there with my dad who uh you know took me to my first galaxy game you know back at the rose bowl to have that come full circle and watch the galaxy win a championship in the home stadium that that's always going to be a special a special memory for me that 2012 team and that 2012 championship run is just one that is always going to be special to me so those are probably my top two and then the third one i kind of gave the hint there is would be the first game i ever went to just you know getting wrapped up in the excitement having a, a, a home team in los angeles playing at the rose bowl uh and just you know being able to finally have a, a home team to cheer for that opening game against the new york new jersey metro stars uh, I'll, I'll always remember that one as well so those are probably my top three uh favorite galaxy games ever yeah uh, you know having having been to uh, the last three mls cups um, excuse me. I was I was at the one in 2009 too. I was actually in the stands in 2009 in Seattle for the loss. Uh, that is actually it's still it, it, maybe it's not a favorite game uh, that 2009 Cup, but that whole season was one of my favorite seasons um, to ever watch the LA Galaxy because it was so surprising. Um, it was a team that was, you know, down in the dumps. Bruce Arena comes in at the end of 2008 and you're hoping that, you know, maybe he can do something and he puts together a team that makes a surprise, you know, dash at MLS Cup and realistically probably should have won that MLS Cup. I don't think RSL outplayed them at all. 
Um, you know, maybe a little unlucky in a couple ways. I think Ricketts did, Ricketts ended up getting Ricketts, hurt in that game. Yeah, yeah, he broke his hand. So that yep. there were a lot of things that didn't go their way. And so it's funny that we mentioned 2011 being kind of the start of the dynasty, but really that dynasty started in, in 2009. Uh, oh, was, oh, oh for was, sure. It was, it was after Bruce Arena took over and brought all those pieces were put into play in 2009. They almost did it. You know, they were, you know, one penalty shot away from, from extending it. Um, so in the 2010 team, we talked about that. So the dynasty really began in 2009. That, that, that's people shortchange the LA Galaxy a lot because they, they count the dynasty basically as 2011 to 2014. And it's like, no, 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 no. Chill out for a second. It was 2009, um, which is really where it started. It was 2010 where they were very, very dominant that year. Um, you know, and it, it's unfortunate it gets brushed over so easily mm-hmm. in 2010 because 2010 was a team that should have won an MLS Cup, hands down. It should have been 2010, 2011, 2012. 2013 is a year that never came together. So I'm not going to one of these people who is like, oh, 2013 was a missed opportunity. It, it just wasn't going to happen in 2013. You could tell. Um, but then 2014 certainly came together uh, in a way that, that you could tell that that was a championship team. So, I mean, really, it's 2009 to 2014, which is a ridiculous stretch and Um, and and i'm gonna even say i'm gonna be bold and say 2015 and 2016 those teams weren't awful you know when we look at our bracket our top 16 teams both 2015 and 2016 are in the running and you think about the players that were brought in gerard uh giovanni dos santos was at the height of his powers uh, you know however you want to take that for what it's worth um those teams could have been contenders and had things, you know, bounce, the ball bounced a different direction. Those those seasons could have been good as well. So I'd even extend that to 2016. Yeah, it, it was a it's a long period of dominance. Uh, my favorite, I, I think it's in 2011 or 2012, maybe 2012. Um, it is, and I, it's like, hey, Josh, it's your favorite. You should remember the year. It, it's <laughs> it's more that it, I just remember it was the first time I ever felt the atmosphere really be that electric for just a regular game. Uh, and it was whenever the New York Red Bulls came to, uh, I think, probably Home Depot Center at the time, um, and they played the LA Galaxy, and it was Thierry Henry, it was David Beckham, it was Luke Rogers, uh, it was Landon Donovan, it was all these things. I think uh, the Briggs, who played the song, you know, uh, uh, This Is LA, this, uh, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, um, they played before the game and in the riot squad section they the the band was actually in riot squad <laughs> section and they played the song live um and then that game ended up being the most one of the most exciting regular season games you know up to probably the zlatan game for me um and it was a one one draw uh it was both teams going at it like it was the playoffs and it wasn't uh that was the famous landon donovan got asked about luke rogers after the game and he says who Um, so that was, it was just, it had all the trash talking. It had everything that you wanted in it. Um, and it was just, it was just a great game. Uh, you know, you, you go to the 2012 MLS cup is great. Uh, the 2014 MLS cup was, uh, crazy. The 2012 is special for me. That was my first year in the press box actually. Um, so what's that like, Josh? What, being in the press box? It's, it's amazing. You should try it. Um, so I actually got to go down to the locker room, um, and it was crazy because, you know, there's just th- this these teams work so hard to get to these points, Eric. And I know it's, you know, it's cliche to say this, but the relief and the joy and the enthusiasm and just how excited they are whenever they come off the field have, being MLS Cup champions is crazy because you'll get hugs. You know, you get hugs from players. You're like, hey, how's it go? Oh, oh, I'm getting a hug. All right, cool. Yeah. You know, that's cool. You're getting high fives. You know, you're getting slapped on the butt sometimes. Um, you know, good game, good game, that type of thing. Uh, the whole deal. And then uh, my favorite uh, sort of interaction with this was that you know I'd really for the first time gotten to know some of the players. Uh, we've had some we had some guys on the show before that, but this was the first time we really got a chance to be one on one. So some of the players knew me, um, which was crazy. And so I, I remember Todd Donovan uh, standing at his locker, and this is when we could go to the lockers. Um, something that needs to return, quite honestly, to the locker room. Um, but we we would go to the lockers and um, you would wait for the guys. And so uh, Todd was there. He had his bottle of champagne. Champagne's being you know flung all over the place, that type of thing. Uh, we the reporters had walked in basically, and they were told warned that you were probably going to get you know doused with champagne. And so we're standing <laughs> they hand there. Out goggles. 
Yeah, they, they should have. Um, we, you know what? If you're smart, you bring a plastic bag and you put your stuff in it, uh, which nice. is what I did in 2014. Um, so in 2012, you're there. And I remember going up to it and Todd Donovan's like, uh, you know, standing there right in front of me. And he was like, all right, you guys, uh, you guys want to come over and talk? And we're like, yeah. And so we took a step forward and he gets out the bottle of champagne and we're like, <laughs> we take a step back. He's like, no, 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 come on over here. And it was like, okay. And then we got, we got champagne doused on us uh, by Todd and everything. And he's like, and you know, that's, 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 it certainly is something it's like you, you've covered the these guys for the whole year and that you know they're sort of honoring you with that with that respect it's kind of nice it's kind of yeah. fun and that's um, what so it's that, all about yeah oh yeah you know that, oh, that's really the whole goal so to, to you know to make it to the pinnacle you know i think the pinnacle above that would be what like a, a champions league or a world cup but for some of these players they're not going to be able to sniff that so this is really it this is the this is you it. know this is the, the the best you can possibly get so i would imagine you're catching players at the at the peak of their joy yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun thing, and and hopefully, um, you know, whenever you talk to any of those old players, Mike McGee, Todd Donovan, um, you know, Alan Gordon's, any of those guys, they talk to you about how much they played for each other, and that's what's missing for the Galaxy. Um, that's always what's missing, and so um, that's what sort of has to be developed about this this camaraderie. This this you will do anything for the guy next to you, and it's easy to say it's harder to do, but those Bruce Arena teams were filled with that, Eric. Absolutely filled with that. Everybody knew that they were backing up the guy next to him, um, and that was big. So I, I think, you know, some of those games are, are fun. I'm sure listeners have their their favorite games. I would like to, you know, as, as boring as ours has, at least at least I think I threw in, you know, sort of a crazy <laughs> one with the New York Red Bulls, um, one that we've had there. But, I mean, there's been some unbelievable games. The The 2014 MLS Cup was a, was a crazy game. Um, yeah. remember LA Galaxy go up one nothing, uh, and then New England comes back because of Omar Gonzalez lazy play yeah, uh, I mean, in the it, corner. They got real nervous there towards the end. I remember that. So, so I remember going with uh, going to the celebration down at uh, what was it, Hermosa Beach Pier. Um, I think that was where where it was, either Hermosa Beach or Manhattan Beach. I can never remember which one is which, like where we were at. But um, there was the celebration for that MLS Cup, and I went into the bar, and this is where I had tacos with Dave Sarikin, um, because I went into a bar afterwards with some friends, and Dave say, came you might in and said, "Drop that name, you just you pick up yeah, that name, yeah, you well, just drop." I messed up yeah, that well, joke, I, man. We'll, we'll this, fix this in this, post. <laughs> no, we won't. No, because I'm not spending the time doing it. But um, no, I've told the story before, but I'll, I'll tell it again. But I, I went in there with some um, some friends after the whole celebration and stuff like that. We went over to a bar um, to get some food because they're like, these are the best tacos are here. Which, by the way, I will tell you that the person who made these tacos has ho- has had six or seven parties at my house or at my parents' house um, because the tacos are so good. Um, so Hector, Hector's still the man whenever it comes to tacos and like, he's, I swear to God, I want them right now. So that's one of the things I'm missing. But, um, but it, I went in to have tacos and Dave Sarakin came over and said, I heard these are the best tacos. And I said, you know, I was, I, I told the coach, I'm like, I got you coach. I'm going to pay for your tacos. We'll, we'll have a little chat. And so he came over and chatted. I go, did you ever think that the, the galaxy were going to lose that game? He goes, we were a hundred percent confident going into that game that we were going to win it. He goes, and all through, as soon as we scored that first goal, we knew we were winning it. It was over. And I go, so there was no there was no doubts. He goes, we had doubts. He goes, when New England scored that goal, nobody expected that. That was the first time. We kind of got punched in the mouth there. Mm-hmm. Right? And that was that was true. If you go back and watch that game, there is a real sense of oops, what just happened? Um yeah, that, because that's that wasn't the script. That yeah, that was not the script. Um that's not how it was supposed to go. And uh the LA Galaxy ended up winning it in, in extra time, uh Mr. Robbie Keane, uh putting that in. But you know, those are those are the little things that sort of happen along the way. But uh you could tell that all those players all played for each other and the coaches knew that the players played for each other. Uh and that's really I think the key to their success more than anything else uh that was sort of out there. So um just to let you know, the LA Galaxy are going to be showing all five of the MLS Cup championships, which I am very excited about because I have seen highlights of the 2002. I have seen highlights of 2005. I have not seen the full game of 2002 or 2005. And so starting on March 30th, that's this Monday, uh, it's MLS Cup Mondays, starting at 12 p.m. on LAGalaxy.com and only within the Spectrum Sportsnet area. Um, so if you're outside of the state and you're outside of that area, you will not be able to watch. You're going to be geo-blocked on this. I'm sure it had to do with marketing rights and everything else whenever they're re-showing these games. Who knows? Um, it, it's yeah. it's ridiculous and it's stupid. Yeah, I was going to say, is, are they running ads? Are they selling ads for MLS <laughs> Cup 20, 2011? I, I, it seems odd to me. This is, t- this is an MLS thing. Remember we talked about in the preseason yeah. that they were and, geo-blocking and, this. And I understand that if you're holding out for a contract, but this is kind of a... 
you know, it's, there's a global pandemic going on. You would think this would be the the time to maybe lift lift that restriction, maybe this this once or for these next six weeks. It just seems odd to to stick to that for to show an old game. Seems a little oh. strange. Oh, it, it's stupid to begin with. I mean, just even on the premise of hey, we're are, we're we're sort of pushing for a contract. If they end up doing, remember, we were all in the hopes that somebody like ESPN would buy the rights to all of the local broadcasts and everything, and just put everything on ESPN Plus, and you could watch any game anywhere you were because that's the smartest thing to do. Um, at least from the viewer's perspective, somebody's going to have to tell me how div- divvying that up in the United States is worth it. Um, I don't think it is, but hey, whatever. Uh, that that that's what they're going to do. Well, it feels more and more like yes, even if ESPN would bid on all that, that they would just show them in the local areas, um, even as it goes because of the geo blocking and everything else. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Side tangent. Uh, MLS <laughs> Cup Monday is coming up March 30th, 12 p.m. LAGalaxy.com. You can watch the 2002 is the first one. 2005 on April 6th. 2011 on April 13th. The 2012 MLS Cup on April 20th. And the 2014 MLS Cup on April 27th. All those kick off exactly at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I'm sure there's some like broadcast stuff that's on there as well. So who knows if the ball actually kicks at 12? But uh, you know it'll be yeah, like every the, MLS game you ever watched, right? Yeah, there'll be a little little pomp and circumstance, and you know pregame ceremony, all that fun stuff. I will say, uh, you've mentioned that Taylor Twelman's a friend of the show. You might want to have him on speed dial if you're watching those uh, 02 and 05 games. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, uh, well, I mean the poor guy. <laughs> um, you know, he has to put up with me on, on, uh, on a regular basis anywhere, but I'm sure I'll send a snapshot just to remind him. Uh, yeah. he, by the way, still has some of the best stories. Whenever Pat Noonan was uh, an assistant coach for the LA galaxy, uh, Noonan and Twelman were, were best friends. And so basically, um, and still probably our best friends. Um, so anytime I would have one of them on, I'd ask him to tell me a story about the other one. And then I'd tell the other one about that story the next time and have him tell me a different story. So we got like 10 or 12 good stories. I was say, about, that's its own podcast right there. Uh, you could put that yeah. on a separate feed. Yeah, yeah, about Noonan and Twelman. I think my favorite one is I think they dressed up for uh, for Halloween. They dressed up as crisscross. Um, so wow. I think that was yeah, right. That feels a little sketchy in 2020. It, 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 it does, but you know what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think it was good. I think I think let's that was humorous. Those, yeah, let's hope those photos don't resurface. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it was just the outfits, Eric. I'm sure okay, it didn't go saying. that deep. I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, but still. Um, so anyway, so that's where you got MLS Cup Mondays coming up uh, on uh, starting this Monday, March 30th. Uh, now, Eric, you want to go over the bracket. We've been going over the best LA Galaxy team ever. We've been mentioning some of these teams that were in it. Um, we talked about the number one seed being the 1998 team uh, that averaged 2.13 points per game. We've talked about recency bias, and I'll tell you right now, the more and more I watch this, the harder and harder it's going to be for me to vote for a team that is like, you know, pre-2014 maybe. <laughs> um, it's, it's starting to feel that way. Yeah, there there might be a reasonable argument right now in my mind that the 2017 LA Galaxy team with or the 2018 LA Galaxy or the 2019 LA Galaxy that's 20 that's it 2019 LA Galaxy with Zlatan Ibrahimovic probably could have kicked some of these MLS Cup butts. I'm just, just saying. Watch, watch your mouth. Right? I'm just, just saying. Just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you the tell one- everybody what the uh, what the results were of our our first half of the bracket? Yeah, we're, we're kind of taking our time with this, obviously, with the, um, you know, everything on hiatus. You know, we saw the MLS Cup Mondays being a thing that's going to be going on for about a month. So there's no need to really rush this bracket. So we're really taking our time. Um, you know, the, we put the first half of the round of 16. So I have the results from our first matchup. We had 90, 1998 versus 2004, and 1998 ran away with it with 84% of the votes. Uh, the LA Galaxy actually posted um, the highest goal total, uh, which was an 8-1 victory over the Dallas Burn of that 90, 1998 team. And let me tell you, I know there's recency bias, but when you look at Mauricio Cienfuegos and the way he was able to just things off, Welton was putting away goals. Ezra Hendrickson was running up and down on the sideline clint mathis a young clint mathis getting on the score sheet harut karapetian i think scored a, a hat trick in record time so that ni- hat trick yep. yeah so so that 1998 team um you know i know it's a different era but that they had a lot of talent on that team so i'm going to be curious to see you know how people look at it though 
other, one of the close matches, and we'll, we'll jump to it, was 2010 versus 2019 with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. That's when I, I almost feel like I, I might have picked 2019. If you catch them on the right day, they might upset that 2010 team because that 2010 team was upset in the playoffs. But uh, they did end up going through on the lowest percentage. 2010 beat 2019 with 69% uh, versus 31%. So 2010 advances. And then uh, in our other matchup, we had 2011 versus 2015, 2011 advances with 93 percent of the vote so that was a, a landslide i think they're probably a heavy favorite uh to take this whole thing if you're if you're placing bets on it and then our last uh half was 2002 versus 1996 and of course the mls cup champion 2002 team advance so top four seeds one two three four they all advanced in the first half of our bracket so we'll see if there are any upsets I thought 2019 had a chance uh but they weren't able to pull it off so just to give you a preview of our second half of the round of 16 we have 2012 versus 2009 so there's another mls cup side but they're not the higher seed so i'm going to be curious uh, to see we talked about that 2019 making it to mls cup final are you going to give it to the the team that you know dragged their their feet across the finish line or are you going to give it to a team that was dominant and fell just short uh the other matchup we have 2016 versus 2001 so no champions there but when you look at the rosters uh you know that was a nigel de young team a giovanni dos santos uh steven gerard versus you know, 2001 you had your alexi lawless luis hernandez so depending on how you you judge who how they'd match up Curious to see how that one, that one might be close. You know, you have your 5-12 NCAA upset. So we'll see if the 12 can upset the five seed. And then our last one uh, is 2013 versus 2014. I have a feeling 2014 is going to take that one away just because they were the champions uh, and they're playing a non-champion side. But again, when you look at the rosters, a lot of similarities, uh, but I would imagine 2014 goes through. So we're about halfway through the first round or the round of 16. So we're going to be putting the article up and there are word little blurbs about each team just telling you about what their accomplishments were that season, who are the key players. Uh, so when you head over to cornerofthegalaxy.com, you could see the next half of the bracket and make your decision, make your votes be heard, and uh, read a little bit about those teams and learn a little bit about the history. That 2009-2012 uh, that matchup is probably the most interesting one. Um, 2012, you know, obviously an MLS Cup winner, but 2009, you know, a penalty kick away. They basically have equal on points per game. Um, so... Uh, it's an interesting one. It's it's certainly be up there. It'll be up on cornerofthegalaxy.com starting on Friday, probably about mid-morning or so. Um, so you can check that out and make sure you vote in that one, and we'll continue this bracket as we go along. All right. Um, see, we found some stuff to talk about. Yeah. We, were, we were worried. Like I was going to say, and, and yeah. we talked about our, our FIFA matchup that we – you know, mentioned how we broadcast that earlier. I also wanted to mention Cosmo SC one more time. I know oh, yes. you might be, you might be getting sick of me talk about it. No, no, please <laughs> tell everybody about your red card, <laughs> but, Mr. But, two yellows. <laughs> but we, 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 this is now becoming a thing, especially with uh, people being um, quarantined and at home. You, there are people have plenty of time now to play FIFA. So we actually had two squads. We had Co- Cosmo SC and Cosmo SC two. So we had uh, two squads that ran some friendlies against each other. I was fortunate enough to get a, a red card in one of my opening matchups. So a double yellow I was able to score some goals. So just a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to check it out, you could always follow uh, v- VGN gamer 12 on Twitter. And then uh, I want to give a shout out to David Klein. Cause he was the manager of Cosmo SC two. So he's at decline 44. So uh, as we're in this quarantine time, I think we'll continue to put it up and it is a lot of fun uh, to play and have some fun. And we have people of all skill levels. There are some, people there uh you know i like i know david klein he's he's an all-star is able to get things done and you have other people who are you know not a, as as that high skill level like myself and and everyone's in there really just to, to have fun talk on the headset and have a good time so i, I want to give another shout out to cosmo sc yeah it's a lot of fun uh as it goes to our fifa broadcast as well there will uh there will be again another game coming up la galaxy versus sporting kansas city if you didn't watch because you said this is a video game and why would i watch it one i would i would like to make two arguments for you one is that we're allowing the computer to decide these things eric you and i are not playing we're not waiting one side over the other. All we're doing is simply letting FIFA simulate a soccer game, and then we're adding our very straight, not very funny talk to it, um, which seems <laughs> some people seem to find entertaining. I don't. I don't. Maybe maybe it's entertaining. Maybe it's not. If you now measure things by Emma Boateng's, then maybe you find it, found it a little bit yeah. entertaining. And if you don't know about measuring things by Emma Boateng's, maybe you should go watch our video on Corner yeah, of the Galaxy. You have, you have to watch. And and the, the other kind of 
pro to watching that is you may watch a galaxy game for 90 minutes they could be in it and then they fall apart at the death and you've now wasted two hours of your day and right. you're heartbroken here right you're in and out in 20 30 minutes we give you the meat and potatoes and then you're you're back on your on your way to listen to your podcast or catch up on uh uh, tiger King or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, so, you know, in and out you're in 20, 30 minutes and you're entertained with a galaxy match in that time span. Several people have said, I did not expect to watch the whole thing, but I ended up watching the whole thing again. It'll fly right by for you. It'll be just like watching a soccer game. We'll keep it up. We'll try to do this as much as we can every single week. And hopefully if we're really, really good, Eric, because we have nothing better to do or because our wives are not paying attention to us that much right now, uh, (laughs) we will have one come out every single game day at exactly the time that game was supposed to kick off. All right. So 7.30 p.m. dedication to the craft. 7.30 p.m. Saturday. You know what? I may even ask the LA Galaxy if they'll put together a lineup card for me like <laughs> some way i can i can tweet that out i may I'm, I'm thinking about it i'm, I'm serious impressive. okay so we you have if you're gonna if you're gonna do a bit eric dedicate yourself to that bit yeah 100%. go all in yep all, all in all in don't go half on it 100 percent, all the way in all right so that is uh some of the stuff you can look again go over to youtube corner of the galaxy that's where you can find all of those videos we are posting these podcasts there they're just not very visual right now as so we don't have cameras we don't have all the fun stuff and plus i rarely shower now i mean you know, <laughs> I like say, two you three days wanna, yeah you don't want a camera on me right now it's, <laughs> it's not impressive all right so uh anything else eric you good no i'm good Tell people where they can find you. Let's get out of here. All right. You can find me on Twitter at GIS Hammer. You could also find me on Instagram at Galaxy Profile. That's Galaxy P-R-O-F-O-U-L. And if you didn't hear last time, I am now on TikTok. You can follow me on TikTok at EV Hammer. So with a game day coming up, you might see another special video coming your way. Wow. I don't think anybody will be prepared for that. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast cornerofthegalaxy.com go vote for your bracket go watch uh, LA Galaxy versus Orlando City simulated in FIFA with some excellent commentary go read all the uh, the coronavirus tracker set while you're up to date and of course listen to these podcasts we thank you very much we hope you're staying safe remember stay home stay safe wash your hands and don't hurt your pelvis I think is where we're going with it alright uh, for Eric the Portuguese Hammer I'm Josh Getzman you've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com have a great one everybody You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo. And on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.